From Washington, this is VOA News. Yemen says more deadly U.S. drone strikes. Kenya's International Airport in Nairobi back in business. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Yemen claims two more deadly U.S. drone strikes. Officials saying at least eight suspected al-Qaeda militants were killed on Thursday while driving their cars in the Hadramut and Marib provinces. Yemen says there have now been six drone attacks over the past two weeks that have killed at least 30 alleged militants. The United States will not comment on possible drone strikes. Thousands of Egyptians who support ousted President Mohamed Morsi are massed in Cairo demanding he be reinstated. Many in the crowds waving Egyptian flags and holding up signs of the deposed president late Thursday while celebrating Eid al-Fitr, the feast marking the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Opponents of Mr. Morsi gathered Thursday in Cairo's Tahrir Square. Muslims in much of the world are celebrating Eid al-Fitr. Worshippers gathered in mosques in Indonesia, the world's most populous Muslim country, to begin celebrations Thursday. Celebrations also going on in much of Asia and the Middle East, including Saudi Arabia, which is home to Islam's holiest sites. Syrian officials continue to deny reports that President Bashar al-Assad's motorcade came under attack Thursday while he was traveling to a mosque in Damascus. The rebel brigade called Tahrir al-Sham said it fired artillery shells in the direction of the motorcade and that some made direct hits. Syria's information minister called reports of an attack completely false. A suicide bomber in Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan province struck the funeral of a slain policeman Thursday, killing at least 30 people and wounding dozens of others. Ayaz Ghul reports from Islamabad. The funeral prayers for the officer were being organized inside the highly secured police headquarters in Balochistan's capital Quetta, just hours after he was gunned down while traveling through the city. Witnesses say that scores of police officers and civilian staff were lining up for the somber ceremony when the suicide bomber detonated his explosives. The powerful blast reportedly caused most of the deaths on the scene, while doctors say a number of those wounded are in critical condition. The provincial head of police operations is among several senior officers killed in the attack. Authorities in Balochistan suspect the violence could be a reaction to a recent operation near Quetta against suspected hideouts of Lashkar e Jhangvi. Ayaz Gul for VOA News, Islamabad. India is accusing Pakistan of conducting a deadly attack on Indian troops in the disputed territory of Kashmir. India's Defense Minister A.K. Antony says it is clear that specialist troops from Pakistan were involved in the Tuesday attack and an Indian military post that left five Indian soldiers dead. Pakistan denies killing the soldiers. A U.S. State Department official says Israeli and Palestinian negotiators will resume peace talks next week in Jerusalem. Those discussions will be followed by a meeting in the West Bank town of Jericho. Two U.S. envoys will attend the negotiations. Kenya's International Airport is reopening to all airlines following a major fire that shut down operations. VOA's Gabe Joslo has more. Kenya's Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Michael Kamau, told reporters Thursday that all flights will resume as normal in and out of Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. We are back on our feet. Anybody who knows Kenyans, we are very, very resilient. That is known the world over. We are not afraid of competition. It's healthy. We are up. We are running. Most flights were grounded Wednesday after a fire that began in the immigration section of the arrivals terminal gutted the building, causing a massive disruption at East Africa's busiest transport hub. 
Kamau says extra security agents have been deployed to ensure that normal security procedures are maintained. Gabe Jocelo, VOA News, Nairobi. Kenyan authorities are still working to identify the source of the fire and what exactly happened. The Paris-based Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development says that its leading economic indicators point to diverging growth patterns around the world with moderate improvements in major economies, but stabilizing or slower advances in larger emerging economies. A new OECD report says the economic fortunes of Europe, Japan, and the U.S. are likely to improve in the coming months. But the OECD says indicators point to slowing momentum in China, Brazil, and Russia, and only a tentative advance in India. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. More at voanews.com.